All right, let's use the tangent ratio to calculate the side lengths of a triangle. Once again, before we start, we got to review to make sure we are labeling the sides of our triangle correctly. But for what we are doing, you have to have a right triangle in order to use these basic trig ratios. Next step you have to remember, when we're labeling a triangle, we're always looking from an angle. If I go to label the sides, this side right here is the hypotenuse because it is on the far side from the right angle. This right angle looks at it. It's also the longest side of the, any right triangle. Next step, once again, we're looking from angle theta. The far side of the triangle is the opposite side, and the side that is right beside our angle is our adjacent side. You have to label those sides correctly, otherwise the rest doesn't work very well for you. And last but not least is our formula. Tan of theta equals your opposite side divided by your adjacent side. A couple other details that I need to remind you of when we're looking at our calculator, you need to be in degree mode. If you are not in degree mode, it doesn't work right. Just as a reminder, radians and gradients are just other ways of measuring angles. For this course, we're only really worried about degrees. Let's move on to an example. So here's a fairly typical example. Find the length of side X. We're given a couple pieces of information. First of all, we know it's a right triangle. Next, we know we've got one side is five centimeters long. We know one angle is 70 degrees. So your first step should always be label the sides. As I label my sides, I am looking from that angle. So this X must be my opposite side. This five centimeter piece is right beside my angle. That must be my adjacent. This side that the right angle points at, that's my hypotenuse. Now we don't need our hypotenuse in this question, but it gets, it's good to get into the habit of labeling it. Next step, write down your equation. All right, I'm going to be working with tan here, mostly because that's what this section is. Tan of theta equals opposite over hypotenuse. Let's fit in the pieces that we know. I know my angle, that's 70 degrees. I don't know my opposite, but I'm going to put my x in there because that's the piece I'm trying to solve for. And I know my adjacent side, that is five centimeters. All right, next step, I want to know what the tangent of 70 is. Now, right now we're looking, we have the angle and we want to know what the ratio is. The two ways you can do it, you can pull out your trig tables and I'm going to look for the 70 degrees. I'm gonna have to scroll down. There we are, there's my 70 degrees. And I know my far right one is actually my tangent column. If I scroll up. Far right one is my tangent column. So I know the tan ratio of 70 degrees is 2.7475. But instead of using the trig tables, use your calculator, because it's got those trig tables built in. Now some calculators, you have to hit the tan button first and then the 70. Other ones, you hit the 70 and then the tan. You just have to get to know your calculator. 70, and I want tan. Not second function, I'm just using tan, because I'm not working backwards like I did before. I know my angle. That's using my, the tan function to get my ratio. There, 2.7475. We'll round it off to four decimal places again, that's lots. But keep that number on your calculator screen, because I'm gonna write down four decimal places, but if you're smart about this, you can actually do the calculation with all of those decimal places. So instead of 70 degrees, I'm going to put down 2.7475 equals x over 5.0. I'm gonna get lazy, I'm not gonna put the units in until we're done. Next step, I wanna get X all by itself, so I'm gonna times both sides by that five. These two parts will cancel each other out. So now I've got X equals five times 2.7475. So if I go to my calculator, you'll notice I still have that all those decimals in there. If I take that number right there and I multiply it by my five, I end up with a lot more accuracy than if I'd rounded it off and used the other number. My final answer, x equals, and I'm going to round it off to one decimal place. For angles rounded to the nearest degree, for sides, normally round it off to one decimal place. That side is 13.7 centimeters long. Let me put a quick note here, just as a reminder, we use the tan function, not second function. Let's do another example. Once again, first step, label your sides. I am looking from this angle. So the far side of the triangle 
is my opposite side. My right angle points in that direction, so this must be my hypotenuse. And that leaves my last side, my adjacent side, because that one is right beside my angle, is right there. Write my formula down, tan of theta equals opposite over adjacent. Let's put our pieces in. Tan of, and instead of theta, I'm going to put in 42 degrees, equals, now this time I know my opposite side, so I'm going to put in 7.2 centimeters, divided by, and this time I don't know my adjacent side, so that, I'm going to put my x in there. All right, let's figure out what the tan of 42 is. I'm bringing up my calculator, double check I'm in degree mode. I'm going to go 42 and hit my tan button. Okay, so tan of 42 is 0 0.9004. We've got that variable on the bottom this time, so it makes for a slightly messier solution. I can't just divide by 7.2 because I still have that x on the bottom. So what I'm actually going to do, I'm going to take both sides and times it by x. x on the top, x on the bottom, those two cancel each other out. So now I've got x times 0 0.9004 equals 7.2. My goal is still to get that x all by itself, so I'm going to divide both sides by 0 0.9004, divide this by 0 0.9004, now I'm going to solve. x equals, and let me bring my calculator back up. There's a couple of tricks you can use to keep that number in. It's a little more awkward this time, so what I'm going to do is I'm going to clear it off. I'm going to type it in. I'm going to lose just a little bit of accuracy, but not enough to really matter. All right, to finish this all off, I'm going to take 7.2 divided by 0 0.9004, 7.2 divided by 0 0.9004, and there we've got our answer, 7.996, and then a whole bunch of other decimals. Let's round it off to one decimal place, where I've got x equals 8.0. Don't forget our units, so it's 8.0 centimeters, and that is the length of our side. So don't forget, these last two examples, I showed one example where we were solving for a variable that was on the top, this time I solved for a variable that was on the bottom. The process is slightly different. The algebra is slightly different, but it's the same basic equation. Just keep an eye on which one you've got.